Hi everybody, my name is Jason, and that's it. And um, whenever you only hear one of us, it means there's probably something going on, some kind of problem going on. And um, as you can see from the intro of that, we were playing some calm music here and um, just trying to chill out a little bit. And um, I guess the life of Boss Clan is, is it's hardcore. It has a lot of ups and it has a lot of downs and you know the world that we're living in right now it's it's really hard for my youth for the youth my boys to see a positive future and to see anything hopeful of this world right now the entire world is inoculated there's there's really nothing left and uh you know um I have a picture of this sacrificial lamb right here, and um, just a few minutes ago, I had to end the life of a friend of the boys. And for this week, we've been, it's, it's probably been about a week or so, two weeks, we've had a down calf, one of our calves, Rachel. And, um, we, you know, the thing about calves and things about cows is, you know, we're... You know, we have 10 pit bulls, and every pit bull is a life to us. Every pit bull is a friend to us. Every, every bull has its own personality, and that's the same for the cows. Every one of the cows have a different personality. They have a different way that they are, and they, um, we have never, you know, we've had 20-some cows, and since 2022, the beginning of this year, we've lost nearly all of them. Every, almost every single one of them are gone, and... Um, it is something we don't eat, the meat. We would probably eat the meat if we could catch them before they ended up like completely collapsing. But, but a Torah law is that you know, if they die of natural causes, you don't, you don't eat that meat. There's, there's something wrong with it. And so we befriend these animals. We befriend the cows. And um, they were, the boys did everything possible. We were going out two or three times a day. Um, lifting her up, walking with her. It took two two boys, and you know we're just cutting enormous amounts of grass here and delivering it to her to feed her. And you know, yesterday, last night, it seemed like she was getting a little better, but that it seems to be what happens when they're just about to die. And I don't know if this is with humans, along with this, but I can tell you from from cows that they they look like they're about to recover like life goes right back into them and then the next day they they can't even hold their head up and this morning I went out there and our baby cow she was she was moaning and she couldn't she couldn't she was incoherent they, she didn't even know the kids were there and you know these guys have sat beside her for days on end and and loved her and prayed beside her and you know it's um it's hard it is very hard and um, when I had to put a bull in her head, you know, the boys just, they just broke, they broke out crying, right? And um, these are experiences that I bring to you guys because they're real. And, you know, a lot of you guys are family with us and a lot of you guys share a lot of our moments with us, downs and ups. And today's definitely a down day and it will be a down day and... Um, it's 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 hard. What's even harder now is you know we're we're hanging her up. Now not only did we just I had to kill a friend of the boys and the friend of the family and you know our hope for the future right. A female cow is uh, um, just really the only hope that we had in, in kind of a grim world. And um, you know Hasatan is having his way, and he's all he's always doing this to us. And like I've talked to earlier in this week about unclean spirits and the darkness and the different things that come across, it would be a surprise, but we read in the book of Revelation how that Satan hates Torah keepers, how everything, he he's totally against everything with Torah keepers because if you're following the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator, it's a thousand percent opposite of what Satan wants you to do. Satan wants you to be hooked on drugs, he wants you to be hooked on alcohol, he wants you to be in a uh, broken relationship, he wants your kids to be at odds with you, he wants your house to be a disarray, he wants everything against you because every single thing like that will pull you further away from trying to put your eyes upon the ball. And the ball is the kingdom to come. And that is what I 
try to tell my youth, and this is what I try to convince myself of, is that this world is gone. This world is, is passing away. And I'm actually trying to keep this together here. This world is passing away. And the only world that we do have is the kingdom to come. And so we have to be strong. And sometimes we have to sacrifice those that we love in order to put them out of their pain and out of their misery. But it's hard. And it's very hard. It's hard to continue on. But guys, I share this with you. Not to feel sorry for Boss Clan. There's no reason to ever feel sorry for Boss Clan. Boss Clan is tough. All my people are tough. We go through ups and we go through the downs. And um, today is definitely a down. So let's get into this and let's get into a little bit of teaching of, not even teaching, just reading of the Torah and where we are at. We started up in Leviticus 1 yesterday. And um, it's real interesting, right? Because this is the thumbnail that I had for Leviticus 1. And it was a sacrificial lamb. And, you know, when we are dealing with a sacrifice, when we are taking an innocent animal, and I believe that the, back in the days, they just cut his throat, right? They, supposedly, it's, it's, uh, they had a way that it, the animal, they were the perfect killers, I guess, that they were able to calm the animal down and cut the throat without the animal even knowing it was, it was starting to bleed out. I, I don't know how that is even possible. But when we understand that the sacrifice of a precious animal is what is, is atonement for our sins, then we would probably not want to keep sacrificing this animal over and over and over. Same way, we did not want to keep sacrificing our Messiah Yahushua over and over and over. He paid the price, the, the price that is to free us from the curse of, the, of the breaking the laws of the Torah. And when we continue living in sin, when we continue doing great evil, we're just, we're whipping our Messiah over and over. We're taking his contribution. We're taking his blood and his sacrifice and his being beat up by these rogue group of horrible people. Over these horrible Sadducees and Pharisees and these people in Judaism that took our Messiah and hung him on a tree. And we are violating that. Our Messiah had to die because we could not keep our lives together. Because we could not stay out of sin. Because sin is at the door and we've always opened the door to sin. And so many of us are coming out of slavery. We're coming out of the, the end where our creator is calling us, where he has been calling us. And he's called us to, to him, to him. Our King Messiah, Yahushua, will be, I hope he's on his way. If he's not on his way, there's not going to be a tremendous amount of flesh left. There will not be. The world is, is, so, is so quickly dying. I do not know if you guys, you know, number one is you should never, ever watch TV, ever. But if you're able to look around you, the world, is, the people are dropping. Like I, when I say dropping like flies, I mean literally dropping like flies. There's never been a die off like there is now. And it's very easy to understand why, but I can't say anything on YouTube. It's completely censored, it's completely blocked. And this channel is about Yah's Torah. It's about bringing people to the Torah. Nothing more, nothing less. And salvation always begins at that stake, at the cross, where our beautiful Messiah died for us. So with that, and I don't mean to just bring you guys into depression or sadness or anything like that. Um, I'm super sorry. I don't even know if I'll post this. I'll probably post it. But it's simply as an example that, you know... Um, you guys can get through this as well. Boss Clan will get through this. We will recover. Hearts will break. We'll wipe our tears. We'll dust ourselves off. We'll stand back up and we'll get up. And that is the point of it. And we, when we are tested, when Hasatan comes and tests us, we must all come through. We must put up our dukes. We must put our heads down, our hands up. And we must fight against these devils and demons. Regardless of the despair, regardless of how dark it is, regardless of anything, there is nothing more important than securing our souls. This world is going to pass away. 
We're not going to make it through this out. None of us are. We may or we may not, but don't count on it. But count on one thing. Count on our creator being a truth keeper. That he doesn't lie. That his word is good for now until all the end. And because his word is good, that is what I depend upon. And because he sent his son to die for me, for you, for all of us, for human beings. Right? He came to die for those who will accept why he died. But it is not a live in sin card. This is not a surf pornography and just keep surfing pornography and over and over. It's not cheating on your family and destroying your family. It's not beating up your wife or your wife beating you up over and over and over, right? We fall. We have problems. But we absolutely have to seek our creator where he is found. And we must seek the kingdom where it is. Let's begin. Leviticus 2. This is the grain offering. And when any will offer and when any will offer an oblation unto Yahuwah, his offering shall be a fine flour. And he shall pour oil upon it, and frankincense frankincense thereof. Frankenstein. That's you can tell I'm just I'm I'm wiping my tears, I'm trying to get myself in order, and I probably shouldn't be reading this today, but you know what? This is probably when I absolutely need to be reading it. Okay, and he put frankincense thereof. And he shall bring it unto Aaron's sons, the priest, and he shall take thereat his handful of the flour thereof, and of the oil thereof, and with all the frankincense thereof, and, all, and the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar, to be an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And the remnant of the oblation shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is the thing most holy of the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire. And if you bring an offering of an oblation bacon in the oven... It shall be matzah cakes of fine flour mingled with oil or matzah wafers anointed with oil. And if your offering be an oblation bacon in a pan, it shall be a fine flour unleavened mingled with oil. You shall put part of it in pieces and pour oil thereon. It is an oblation. And if your offering be an oblation bacon in the frying pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. And you shall bring the oblation that is made of these things unto Yahuwah. And when it is presented unto the priest, he shall bring it unto the altar. And the priest shall take from the oblation a memorial thereof and shall burn it upon the altar. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And this is, this is, um, this is a little different. I mean, I guess it says a sweet savor. Um, it's talking about the aroma. And I've, I've talked about this. I've, I've you know, I've, I've mentioned this before that, you know, these, these monsters that have us believing that we're on a, a spinning ball flying through space and there's millions of galaxies and millions of life forms and all this kind of stuff, right? That is people that are pushing us away from our creator who is literally probably right above us. I mean, if, if the earth is his footstool, um, he's probably right above us looking in and, you know, he built the most perfect place that we could ever dwell. It's a paradise, right? The world is a beautiful beautiful place it is simply the system that is sick very sick and right now the system is dying and is trying to die off everybody with it so it is you know this is this is what he was doing right he was trying to get a, yah was trying to get a little bit of relief from all the great evil people were doing and how does he get relief it's like scented oils or uh what are those oils called nicole essential oils right you can take the nicole has a huge list of essential oils and um um, you know, you could take stuff and put it under your nose and when you have headaches and, you know, you put it in clingers, you put it in everything. It smells really super good, right? And so we were basically appeasing our creator, but we were not getting forgiveness of our sins. And so it's very important we, we understand that and, and why he had sacrifice and that he's not just some killer guy that he has all these beautiful animals and they're just cutting their throats day in, day out. There's, there's a reason for it. And um, Yah has his reasons. And that which is left of the oblation, verse 10, shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is the thing most holy of the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire. So there's the food for the, for the priests. No oblation which ye shall bring unto Yahuwah shall be made with leaven. For ye shall burn no leaven nor any honey in any offering of Yahuwah made by fire. As for the, ch as for the oblation of the first fruits, ye shall offer them unto Yahuwah. But they shall not be burnt on the altar for a sweet savor. And every... Every offering of your oblation shall you season with salt. 
Neither shall you suffer the salt of the covenant of your Elohim to be lacking from the oblation. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. I always thought that was very interesting. Um, that our creator, you know, it's not, it's like, it's like he's almost eating this. It's like, you're almost preparing a meal for our creator. I don't know if this, he would consume this, but you would imagine that he probably would consume it some point or somehow or something of the sort. Um, because he's, you know, add salt. Why else would you add salt to something of the sort? Um, to, but to make it taste okay. And so that's, it's very interesting things. I don't have the answers for it, but it's, it's interesting. And if you want to offer, uh, offer an oblation of your first fruits unto Yahuwah, you shall offer for the oblation of your first fruits green ears of dry, grain dried by the fire, even grain beaten out of full ears. And you shall put oil upon it and lay frankincense thereof. It is an oblation. And the priest shall burn the memorial of it, part of the beaten grain thereof, and part of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof. It is an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. So there we have it, and um, I'm not going to go any further and uh, <laughs> hopefully not break your hearts anymore here. Um, much love to everybody out there. We have the best family here on this channel. We have a tremendous amount of subscribers, but there's only a small amount of family. All the subscribers are here for the praise and worship music, the feel-good music, and um, the other day I was mentioning that we get... We get thousand subscribers a month and then we lose immediately 250 I, I think we actually lose over half of that so yah sends and this is the power of yah right this is the way that yah works in mysterious ways years ago i put up a hebrew praise and, and worship music which is really good I, I really enjoy it it's just peaceful it's, it's beautiful music and it took off and so we have this month we had 1300 new subs um you know, but we only, we're only counting up like, we only get like 500 of those and most of the people disappear after time. Uh, but that is the crazy thing about this channel is, is we don't care about subs. We don't care about anything. The, the people that we care about are our little families here is the Carla's, um, the Clarissa's and the, the Grand and Ancient Path Remnant. And, you know, it's the people that we speak with on a day-to-day -day basis and, and everybody's our family, but I, I consider you guys our immediate family. You guys have been there with us. You've been around for us. You guys consult us when we're down. You pray for us when we're broken. And we we, um, we love you guys. And so this is what the family of Yah is about. It's about support. And it doesn't matter the distance. I think Carla is the one that said that. It doesn't matter about distance. Um, family's family. And um, you guys are all our family. And we appreciate this. I appreciate your time. Um, I'm sure Yah appreciates the time. Spend a little bit of time in his word. And I encourage you guys, don't let this be your only reading of the Torah. Don't let this be the only reading of your scriptures in the day, right? This is just a, a precursor here. It's just a, um, it's, a, it's a start, right? It's a good start. And, you know, you, there's so many different wonderful books in, in the scriptures that you can get into. And when you start reading it, it's some are some, like Leviticus, it's kind of, it's kind of sketchy. There's some books that are in, you know, in the Torah that are, that are dry and you, you don't understand it. You know, they're building the temple. You don't, you don't get it. But if we lived back in those times, in those days, when we got instructions from our creator on how to build his temple, we would be doing silly little backflips. We would be like, wow, our creator is going to come to well with us. This is what he wants. This is his designs. And um, now I guess it's even better because we have Messiah Yahushua. And um, that is our king. And that is who is going to defeat all of this great evil that is upon this world. And when he comes, these, these demons and these, these Satanists have no, no hope. Right? There is absolutely no hope. We have an entire world that is turned anti-Christ, an anti-God world that we are in right now. And Messiah Yahushua is going to destroy them. He is going to hurt them. And we are going to reign with him. And we have to hold out to the end. And whether the end is when we sleep with our Messiah and we die in this physical world, when they come and put us in little camps and cut off our heads, or when we don't take what it is they're offering, you know that is, that is where we must hold to the end. We must have this courage and we can never, ever give up. The kingdom road is going to be better. The kingdom way is the better way. It is does get better, and I know it will. And I wish you guys the most love, big hugs, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And you, we will see you guys on Shabbat, where we will be doing a Shabbat reading, which looks like Leviticus 3. Maybe we'll do Leviticus 4 or 5. Maybe we'll read a little bit more into it and just spend a little more time because we've just been, it's been a tragedy of a week. So um, with that, I thank you guys. I love you guys. 
Much love to you. May God bless you and keep you. May his light and his eyes shine upon you. May you forever be in his, his hands and grip and never be away from our, the hands of our creator. Much love, guys. I'm out.